Good evening, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, Russian volcano, Kluvchevskoy, volcano erupted in Kamchatka, uh, is something just now breaking, according to RT News. 11 p.m., they posted this 17 minutes ago. Of course, the time I was actually recording this would be 17 minutes ago. Maybe a little bit later by the time we get it up here on the air. And uh, it's just a reminder, if you remember, I shared with you, one of our intelligence sources, it talked about uh, this planetary thing going on up in the skies above, uh, as it was told to me. He said, you call it uh, an, a debris field that the Earth is going to be traveling through. But he shared with me that starting in May, uh, especially May and June, we would begin to see a lot of changes on the Earth. And that happens to include, of course, um, volcanoes, earthquakes, storms, tornadoes, all these type things that we would be seeing. And a lot of the things that we see with this alleged pandemic going on, this corona pandemic, alleged as I call it, uh, is, well, it's a distraction is what it is. Well, you know, no big deal. So listen, there's a lot more serious things coming our way, and that's just the beginning. Uh, also, in other news as well, let me turn my attention, uh, or turn your attention over here to uh, Syria and Damascus got majorly whacked by Israel, uh, again, violating the biblical promise that uh, Israel himself, the, the original, you know, Jacob, whose name was converted to Israel, who had made with Laban the Syrian, made the promise with Laban that they would never cross this pile of stones, which actually is right there just east of the Jordan River and the mountains there just south of Damascus. But they swore to each other they would never cross those stones there to do one another harm. Uh, and I always like to remind people uh, that the the matriarchs of Israel were all Syrians. Uh, not to mention the oldest Christian churches in the world are in Damascus. Uh, the first one of the first set of believers was was set up in Damascus. Remember, Paul wanted to go destroy all of those believers there. But while he was on his road to Damascus, the whole, the, excuse me, Jesus Christ came to him supernaturally and turned him around. So it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. Uh, and, you know, he said, Lord, who are you? And he said, I'm Jesus. And he was going there to destroy Damascus. I always thought that was kind of a very interesting thing to consider because uh, if you think about it, God knew it was prophesied that Damascus would be destroyed in this day. And just as a reminder to you guys, I don't have time to go into it right now, but God was angry and not happy with Israel when he mentioned this in prophecy that Damascus would be destroyed and put the blame on Israel. Put the blame on the modern state of Israel uh, and other leaders for allowing this to happen. So we see it happening. Uh, Vanessa Bealey also bringing out uh, a report from that launch, that attack there, that the aggression, 5 a.m. Uh, this morning, three civilians were martyred, four others were injured, including a child as a result of the shrapnel Israeli, Israeli missile aggression that fell on houses of the people in uh, al Hayarai and al Adalia towns in Damascus countryside. And of course, Israeli government, as always, says they're trying to root out Iran. This is what they're really trying to do. Well, I think there's another reason behind this, and they're just not telling us right now. Uh, but we happen to have had two U.S. soldiers disappeared in Deir Ezzor province. This is down there where the U.S. is uh, supposedly protecting the Syrian oil. Well, they're not protecting it uh, from this, uh, for the Syrian people. They're actually protecting it against the Syrian people. Now, the Pentagon has not confirmed this source as of yet, uh, that this was brought out on the Sana News, and there's been several other incidents that have happened. Now, this is a file photo that you're looking at. This is not the actual Humvee that was struck by uh, unknown bandits at this time in Syria, but they did, uh, they, they attacked their vehicle, they kidnapped them, and it, it is believed in the article uh, that, uh, that, that, that the report that was put out by Sana News there, that it could be, could very well be that these, uh, troops were actually uh, 
contract soldiers, such as like Blackwater. We often hear the name Blackwater, uh, but there are other, other companies now also doing contract security inside of Syria. And it's one reason why the Pentagon could actually deflect on the story. story. But anyway, they go on to say earlier this month, an officer in the U.S. Army and two members of the U.S. backed Syrian Democratic Forces, SDF, have been killed in an ambush carried out by unknown persons near the village of al Wasai, which is affiliated to al Sur Township and Dead Azor Countryside. Uh, and they said this is the third report of this kind within the last few weeks. Earlier, Sana and the Arab media claimed that the several U.S. troops were killed in an attack by an unidentified gunman uh, in the northeast part of Syria and in eastern bank of the Euphrates. All these reports remain unconfirmed by the Pentagon. It's possible that these killed soldiers were U.S.-linked private military contractors, so the Pentagon is not obli obliged to report on these casualties, much like Russia, Russia when Russia uses uh, their uh, contract troops as well. We see that happen a lot. Uh, now, notice, so they mentioned in there that that these uh, the, the where the U.S. troops were killed were, uh, were an attack by unidentified gunmen in the northeast part of Syria. Well, just so happens U.S. troops have crossed over into uh, uh, Syria from Iraq. A convoy of U.S. military vehicles loaded with military logistics, uh, logistics equipment entered Syria from Iraq via crossing of the Al-Walid headed for uh, Kamshili in the northeastern province of Haska, uh, right there where we're looking at uh, possibly, you know, as they say, unconfirmed. Pentagon is not confirmed uh, that U.S. soldiers were killed up in that area. And, you know, listen, the whole world is is right now uh, engulfed in this alleged uh Corona pandemic. A lot of theories we could go with as far as why they're doing that. I'm not going to get into that tonight, but but uh, while they are engulfed in it, this is a good time for Israel to launch its attacks on, you know, its alleged enemies and to try to make it look like biblical prophecy is coming to pass because in their mind, Damascus must be destroyed. So they're going to keep provoking. Right now, Israel's on high alert. Their their uh, their radar systems are on high alert, expecting retaliation. Uh, that just kind of remains to be seen, because as you know, Putin, President Putin of Russia, kind of controls everything in Syria, whether or not he'll allow them to respond or not, or whether or not the Iranians will respond, still remains to be seen. Turning over to the idea of this alleged coronavirus pandemic, something we've been hearing more and more, especially from the uh, uh, the New York governor, is talking about uh, tracing these people. Find, you know, putting out this, as he put it, an army of people needed to go trace those people that have been in contact with, uh, you know, corona positive people. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? But anyway, Belgium, I got a good friend over uh, uh, in the Netherlands that sent me this, uh, sent me this article here. Belgium recruits 2,000 coronavirus detectives to find infected people, and they need only a few hours of training. Isn't that interesting? Just a few hours of training. Squad of investigators, world first target people who who don't download a contractor tracer app and who would have caught COVID-19. Uh, Belgium plans to recruit 2,000 coronavirus te detectives, as it says here. The invest investigators will try to find those who have been close to those who have the virus and encourage them to get tested. If they test positive, they will be told to self-isolate for, uh, for a fort fortnight. Maybe that was fourth night. I have no idea. Maybe a typo there. The contractor and tracers who will need only a few hours of training could, training could form part of a slowly emerging exit strategy for the lockdown measures in Belgium and are likely to be in work uh, until a vaccine is found. Hmm, that will be your DARPA technology, nanotechnology type of vaccine. I'll save those type things, though, for when uh, me and Yana are together. She's been working on a lot, a lot of information. Uh, it just takes time to put all that together, and hopefully we'll be able to do that tomorrow and get uh, get you guys updated. Uh, but as we started out our broadcast, uh, the eruption of the volcano there in Russia. Kluchekskoy. Um, I can't ever get these names exactly right. My wife made me a bet I probably wouldn't say it right in the first place. Anyway, good evening to all of you guys.